Good morning, everybody. I have like 24 post-it plates, but I want to work. The rehearsal period on an opera is very bittersweet for a composer. It is magical to see your piece taking life in real tangible form, and yet every step of the way you're letting go of it. The development of Golden Gate really took place over five years. What I've found most rewarding about the past two weeks has been to see it happen and to see proof positive that it can happen without production, but just on the merits of the score and the libretto and the story and the characters. Steve, from our very, very first meetings, helped me shape the whole concept of the piece. Next for a dry, refreshing drop of change in streets and changeless faith and where we have six characters who are interconnected in this piece, and what the libretto does, it exposes these characters' vulnerabilities. It was terrific to have John Henry involved with this piece. What we're trying to get at, the immediacy of the drama, of the characters, the clarity of the storytelling, I think we really see eye to eye. When she says Lizarotti dressed in white, you have to calm it down and just make it... It starts with that special, magical nostalgia I feel for my hometown, San Francisco. The magic of the vistas, of the feeling of the air, the presence of the ocean, the sense of space, and a certain sense of grandeur and personal emotion. Head drives on, hardly knowing why, across the toast and bridge. The music in Golden Gate is melodic. It's exhilarating, uh, at times very funny, uh, but also you have great variety. Once upon a time, circa 1980, there lived a man. You have exciting duets, trios, tragic arias, romantic duets. Conrad did an incredible job of writing the emotion into the music. All I have to do is sing it as well as I can and, um, and think the thoughts that the character is thinking and, and pretty much let it go. None of my woes will lead to weeping. I'm not the type to cry. You know, there's a lot of valuable modern music out there, and this opera is both valuable and enjoyable. What I find particularly exciting about the music is how much freedom it gives the singers and the performers for rubato, for dynamic contrasts. It allows them the fluidity of expression that you find in Monteverdi and Cavalli. I like the music very much. It's very witty. 
It's very expressive, it's very easy to listen to, and it's, it's quite easy to sing. The fault is filled. The combination of drama and comedy, I think, is something that we really look for in our theater and TV and movies these days. Because it's naturalistic, that's what life is like. That play on stage, I like to play in rehearsal, I like to play in life. I wanted to bring the sense of play to the character. I think that gives it, a, as the conductor would say, a, a crackle. The comedy and drama work together in this piece uh, amazingly well. Just as I, was hoping, I think Conrad has done a great job in juxtaposing those two things together, sometimes in the same scene. Your squad can't piss on my tux. <laughs> when Liz says, and Jan is dead, is much more powerful when it grows out of this party that, you know, Jan's absent, but her party's swinging. Jan's absent, but her party's swinging. Honey, no one seems to care. Now the morning's ringing. And her own host is there. John squeezes through the reveling fever from the phone, lists the receiver. Yes, I am now on. What? Police? All sounds around him swiftly cease. That very light but sensitive touch of humor with underlying pathos speaks to me very deeply. This piece speaks to me personally on many levels. It speaks about relationships, it speaks about the changing of seasons within one's life. And it's sometimes at rehearsal, it, it touched pretty deeply um, when we were first really getting into putting the piece on its feet. And Jan is dead. What I find extraordinarily exciting is the idea of having a 17 piece ensemble, a contemporary Baroque orchestra that will breathe and play with the singers and their text. The question the opera asks is, is it possible for us to really know one another? Can we break through the personal barriers we have and achieve true intimacy? It's a magical experience to be sitting in the audience or standing at the back of the house on the first night because you're the most dispensable person in the whole endeavor. <laughs>